big things he built, the estates, the factories, the things that he was known for, operation feed yourself, and all of those other things. But when he was not actively involved in the governance of the state, who really was a champion? I would say he is a soldier. He rose through the ranks, went to Fort Leavenworth okay. uh, in the United States for a senior command uh, course. Mm -hmm. In fact, he tells me that it was at that point that he realized that in Kansas, okay. you have uh, three months uh, within which you should plant and get everything done. Because for most of the year, it's winter and uh, there's nothing that we can do. So he came back with the idea that uh, there was, there is the possibility of taking advantage of our resources and doing something. But then he went, he came back to the army. Mm -hmm. So events happened that he became the head of state. So he tried to, to use I think uh, the quality that I will emphasize at this point is the man management that good military officers are supposed to exhibit. Okay. So he, he took care of those who work with him because like a soldier, you know, they, they fall or rise together. And that was one feature that I had. I had, I was very young at that time. I was mm -hmm. 25 years when I was my, uh, my, my boss, Goody Tutu, and him, someone who needs to be mentioned in a very glowing terms as a media man. Mm -hmm. He was former GNA and uh, manager uh, for a very long time. At that time, he was the information services department. So he called me one morning after I had joined uh, the civil service from, okay. uh, from uh, uh, graphic, graphic corporation that I should go to the castle to see first Sade, who was the press secretary. And uh, apparently that was how he wanted me to go and assist uh, officers. So I go to there, to the place, and uh, he gave me a seat, and I understudied him for a year. He became the Northern Regional Commissioner. Okay. And for my God's grace, I was asked to act in his state, as acting press secretary at 25. At 25? Mm -hmm. 25, yes. I mean, being the press secretary for a military government, how is it like? You basically are, you're not a military man too, so what really were you doing? I think I needed the skill okay. to communicate. Mm -hmm. And by God's grace, I had had that. From the university, I found myself editing the whole magazine, mm -hmm. the famous or infamous Sirene magazine of Mr. Hall. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did a lot of things uh, until the Homer, I think, at that time, mm -hmm. the great man, Professor Ofusu Ama, mm -hmm. who was then the man, uh, chairman of the board of graphic, decided to uh, uh, um, recruit some graduates okay. to go and mix up with the trained hands, the experience hands at graphic. So that's how I got my, myself into uh, journalism. And within a year or so, he had arranged for some of us to go to Britain. I was attached to the uh, Lancashire Evening Post in Preston for three months to know the rudiments of journalism and all that till I came back. Then uh, the Information Services Department advertised that they wanted some people that they would train mm -hmm. as uh, diplomats for information. I, <coughs> I applied, I was uh, recruited, and uh, subsequently I was sent to the castle as a... Uh, was a champion uh, corrupt? As corrupt as, as corrupt as any Ghanaian. I don't understand. As that. corrupt as any Ghanaian. There's no one who is perfect. Yes, but this yes. was head of state. It's different from me. Yes. His corruption would affect the state more negatively than myself. I, I buy that. Mm -hmm. I buy that. And uh, the reason why I said that is that I went there to work as a professional. I did not see him put his hand into the kitchen. I wasn't given that opportunity. Okay. I hear stories, but I cannot verse it. I cannot say that I saw them. And I don't think, because I would emphasize the fact that since the events of this overthrow, I know very well the family. I know Auntie Fosti, the wife. 
And I know that at times some of us have had to, to literally assist somehow for you know, upkeep. If they has tied up any amount somewhere, I know they would, they would have fallen on that. And uh, I have, I'm yet to hear anybody who can point to a building that this is a champion's house, or this is what he was building, apart from the family home in Treboom in Ashanti region. I don't know if any, but I stand for correction. If anybody knows of any bank account that he had, any house that he had, uh, whilst I was the press secretary, it didn't come up. And in fact, if it had, if it had been so, I had developed the kind of fearless integrity with which I could have asked. I can give you an example of what I mean. Mm -hmm. I realized that, um, for instance, many people were talking about the way he read his speeches. So I think, I don't know whether I was, I was bold enough or I, something else. I went up to him and I told him, Papa, I think that, you see, what I know about in my profession is that even the President of the United States does not write his own speech. The speeches are written for them and they master them. They own the, the speeches before they come on. So if you don't mind, I will look out for someone who would take you through elocution and so that your presentation of speeches would improve. Would be improved. Okay. You don't mind, yes, go ahead. Oh, I see. Just like that. So, I knew the late John Hammond, a first-class newsreader. Yeah. I told Uncle John, I have a, a test for you. So what? What is it? I told him. And they, they, I know, I saw them take lessons. He was ready to learn. He was ready to study. He felt that there is no um, template for running a modern state with the resources Okay. and the size and the human resources that we have. That there should be some creative way of making an impact on the people. How he went about it uh, is something else. I, I, you, you probably would understand him better. The period of Yintia, mm -hmm. the period of um, Operation Feed Yourself, mm -hmm. were these things that emanated from his being or he was ideologically inclined to oppose them. Did he regret them at a point in time? No, no, no. Never? No, no. He felt that, to quote him, some of the debts that the nation owed were vitiated by corruption. Okay. And to that extent, they should be expunged. Mm -hmm. That is the, the basis of the Yen okay. And then, because of that, and as a result of that, we paid our way through no huge loans were taken, mm -hmm. and very little uh, was taken by way of loans to be loaded on future generations. You know, and uh, as I said, Operation Future Yourself was one of the uh, national construction uh, features that he had in mind to turn this country around. That is as far as I could see from the paper that I had, what I had to uh, interact with the okay. uh, foreign uh, press as to what was actually happening. And to that extent, I know he, there was a program of changing things. Mm -hmm. Now, the understanding you can get from someone of this sort is also what his vision for Ghana was. Ultimately, do you think he had the good interest of this state at heart? Yes, as far as I can recall. He believed that we had enough resources to be independent. We had enough resources to turn wastelands into productive areas. At that time, Dawayan was a wasteland. And some of us, most, some Saturdays, we all took to Dawayan with pickaxes to dig there. Earth to ensure that an irrigation pro project was in place. And it, it advanced very well. Similar things were started in other parts of the country. To turn this country from a rain-fed pattern of agriculture into irrigation-assisted agriculture. 
that was a major, major, major step. Okay. And uh, that transformed, that kicked in into the operation Feed Yourself, and pretty soon were self-sufficient in some of the games. But, all, and but, remem remember mm -hmm. that all this was achieved from the year that it took over in 72 to 75 on the SMC2. Okay. So we're talking about three, three four years. But he got it wrong with you know, union government. To the as you admit that. That you know, I think history should be kind to him in the sense that what he wanted to do was to get a system whereby the military, the civilians and the police would have a way of running the country in a way that would cut out the other cost that come with other forms of government. Okay. You may debate that, mm -hmm. but he was convinced that it was possible, and to that extent, he ticked, as things turned out, his very life on it. And um, don't forget that, to back it up, he, we, they also had the National Charter of Redemption, by which the principles were to guide people to accept issues like this country being one nation, one people with a common destiny. That was a fantastic idea around which we could gather as a people and move the country forward. And um, the, there was the repercussions okay. in the, the way we the organized regional committees. Mm -hmm. They had meetings. I myself, for some time, I had an ex-official role on the National Charter Committee, okay. where I had Mrs. Tedham and a few other people. And at the meetings, at that time, you didn't see anybody going for selfish ideas. Certainly, 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 the whole period that I was in the castle, I had my civil service pay mm -hmm. as first senior information officer of the Ministry of Information, and then principal information officer, and subsequently, a deputy, a deputy director. Those, those salaries came to me in the castle with no additions. But and that's to, what, what I, 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 was, I was on. To, to some extent, there's the conversation that comes up in this case. Mm -hmm. This conversation is tilted to the point that the, the Ghanaian people were fed up with the military. There was Calabula and of those things around. You wouldn't dismiss that there was Calabula. No, 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 I wouldn't dismiss that. I won't dismiss that. If, if, if I don't know, if even the Satan himself comes at any stage into Ghanaian affairs, mm -hmm. at any stage, he will be able to point fingers at some recruits, if okay. I can put it. I that. see. Yeah, yeah, that's that's interesting. interesting. Uh, uh, wait, but there's a point I want to ask you about. So why yeah. did his own colleagues remove him? Well, see, definitely, I think, from a, a hindsight view that I have, mm -hmm. at a point, when you want to move something, there must be someone who will drive it. Mm -hmm. So he was driving the, 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 the engine, if, if, so, if you want to put it that way. And as a result, you had to assume, like most other political leaders we've had, you assume that, that your, your followers would follow you throughout. But it got to a point that, especially after the initial success that nobody can dispute yeah. with the agriculture front and the way things were picking up and the estates that he, he was building, the pond dam and other things, it got to a point that when uh, the resources started dwindling, difficulties came, the highs realities of our okay. um, weather also impacted on it. And therefore, the, the village guy, the tough guy, started developing some Achilles heels. Okay. And that is what, uh, at that point, I think our good professionals, for good or bad, felt that he has been there too long. Mm -hmm. And therefore, this whole idea of uh, union government was only to entrench him. And therefore, 
they wouldn't even listen to what he was saying. They were fed up with that. But uh, I believe and I still think that perhaps if initial, the initial successes had been the platform on which he had sold the idea, perhaps it would have been the, better accepted. That's my own theory. Okay, I, I get your point. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm, I'm just seeking to get some clarity on these periods too. Mm -hmm. So SS, SMC2, you mm -hmm. continue that press secretary. That's a very interesting point, you know. As I told you, I went there as a professional. Mm -hmm. I had the training from Britain. I had the training even from the university, what to how to write things to have an impact. Mm -hmm. And at that time, the siren was quite notorious for okay. all sorts of reasons. <laughs> and um, on the graphic, we, on the Cameron Road, we did fantastic things, you know. Um, so, of course, at that time, we have uh, Elizabeth O'Henney, Ben Mason, and Daniel Zanka, Ben Akume, okay. Teddy Kono. We were quite a team. So we were always bouncing off ideas. Uh, and therefore, we knew what um, proper information should be. Mm -hmm. With that, we were able to, I was able to handle my schedule in such a way that, let me tell you what, uh, what happened, and then you know what I mean. I was there about 2.30 the day that it was removed that Mr. E.K. Bachman. Okay. The, who was in charge of security called me on the intercom. So, Kwamina, could you come to my office? I went there and said, put out an announcement that the general has resigned. I said, no, no. So I said, uh, Mr. Bookman, I don't think we can do it that way. I think, let me call the outside broadcast van to the castle. Let's prepare him so that he can say to the nation that in view of what was going on, if what has been going on, he believes that if he stepped aside, then there will be a greater chance for, of, for people to accept the way forward. Okay. So he looked at me as if I was coming from Mars. said, I see. You don't know what is happening in Burma Camp. Go and put it out. At that time, I didn't know what was happening. We were expecting him in the castle. Okay. And somehow, he had not been well for some time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sorry. So. I was a bit bemused. I was in the castle two o'clock, and the announcement had to come out about three. How was I going to draft it and send it? At that time, nobody was prepared to do it. So I had to go to my office. I picked the phone, called the national newsroom and broadcasting to my good friend, Mr. Ewusi Brookman, who was director of news and current affairs. Mm -hmm. I said, Ewusi, we have a problem. Take my, the way you know me, take my integrity. I'm going to tell you something. Find someone in the newsroom, let him stand by you and put out the statement before, put out the last speaker before I tell you what okay. I have to do. He said, this is Kwame Nanama, the press secretary from the castle, asking you, Mr. Usubukman, to announce that the chairman has resigned, and that F w, General F. W. R. Kufo, or that, that was treasonable material. Why nobody caught me? Because I literally announced the overthrow mm. from my office in the castle. And I thought that, given the circumstances, later on the, it dawned upon me as to the weight of what I, I had just done. So, how come that I, I was also take, taken on by Akufu? When they finished the palace school, he called me in the presence of his ADC, my good friend and my junior in advancement, Mr. A, Major uh, Ben Akwete, okay. and said that, Mr. Anaman, I want you to continue your work as press secretary in the same manner that you did for General Champo, so you'll be my press secretary. That was it. So it was seamless. I did my work, the work that I used to do, I did it, except that I had a different 
We're all now. Mm. This conversation we sure should continue. But I mean, I, I'm convinced that this is just part one of it. Well, folks, I need to end it here. But this conversation certainly must continue. My guest has been James Anaman. He was press secretary to both a champion who headed the SMC1 and General FWK Akufo who headed the SMC2. I'm sure you now got to know how he became the... And he basically announced that um, General Champo had resigned. Thank you so much for watching.